Welcome back to part two of my weekly money trailer buyer's guide. This is part two. This is the second part of a two part video. So if you haven't watched part one, there's a link at the end of this video, or you can just go back to my channel and find part one. But this is part two. So let's talk a little bit more in depth about these monster ramps. So first things first, monster ramps are not the name of these things. They're the name of the PJ brand version of these ramps. These ramps are called dovetails and dovetails come in different forms. You can have fold out dovetails such as the PJ brand has monster ramps. Um, uh, the big text brand calls them mega ramps, different brands, different manufacturers call these ramps different things. But at the end of the day, they're all fold out dovetails and there's also hydraulic dovetails and different things. So um, anyway, that's that's that. I just want to clarify that. And by the way, I'm not sponsored by PJ. I wish I was. I'd probably make a pretty penny, but I'm not. So uh, anyway, just want to clarify that. Now, there is a little bit of misconception or confusion around about uh, around the numbers that that follow some of these trailers, such as 25 plus five or 30 plus five or 35 plus five. I get questions a lot from people saying, what, what is what's the first number mean? What does the second number mean? It's very easy. So, in, for example, in a 25 plus five trailer, Basically, the 25 is that that trailer has 25 feet of straight deck, 25 feet of wooden deck. And then the additional five are metal because that's where the monster ramps are. So the monster ramps take up five feet of the deck space of this trailer. It, obviously, it folds out. So you end up with 10 feet of ramp. But as far as the, the flat deck portion, you can divide it up as 25 is the wood part. Five feet is the second part. So that's that. Now, the pros that I see to having monster ramps, the more I look at them, the more I talk about them, the more I like them. Um, you can load larger things like tractors. You can load cars easily. You saw in some of the clips of uh, some of the images I showed when I was talking about my straight deck ramps, uh, my straight deck with slide out ramps. I was loading a truck and I had like little wood pieces at the bottom of my uh, at the bottom of my ramps. That was because without that, where the ramps meet the trailer would be too much of a point. <clears throat> and that would possibly, you know, d damage the bottom of a vehicle. So I raised the ramps with those, you know, three wooden boards, uh, which are basically eight buys or two buys, you know, two by sixes rather and two by eights. Um, I cut them into two and three feet long sections and stacked them, you know, in a staggered pattern to raise them basically to make my own makeshift, you know, make, uh, dovetail or monster ramp. So that's not the safest way to do things. Um, I say f for sure that monster ramps are the safest way to do things or use race ramps with your slide out ramps like I showed earlier. Um, so those are the pros. It's just easier to load stuff. Now, it's really funny. One of the guys I dispatched for recently had to, he hauled um, two really, really large steel or, or metal spools of, of, of cable wire. And when he got to the, to the, uh, to the receiver, they didn't have a forklift to unload these. This actually happened twice. Um, it almost happened to another guy I dispatched for. And miraculously, one of the guys on site was like, wait a minute, we have two forklifts. Let's just lift them and the guy can drive out from underneath. But in the case of my other driver, literally the receiver's uh, strat strategy was let's fold down his monster ramps and roll them off. And that's what they did. Was it the safest thing? No. But my guy caught it all on camera so that, heaven forbid, it was damaged. They wouldn't say it was the driver's fault. No, this was the unloader's fault based on their technique. <laughs> so whether it's right or wrong, good or bad, whatever, I'm in the middle with that. Um, but that's another reason because it provides at least uh, a variety of options for loading and unloading. Now, about the cons, I already mentioned some of these. Yes, the hinges uh, hang lower than the deck of the trailer. So are they prone to scraping? Yes, I showed you some pictures of that already. Um, the sound, of course, is clinging and clanging as you're going around the along the road because, you know, you have metal on metal. These When they fold back into their travel position, there's metal on metal. But you can put a strap across those and there and thereby, you know, get rid of the, the noise. Uh, some of my guys put, you know, some, uh, some moving blankets from Harbor Freight in between the two, you know, pieces of, of, of metal once the ramp is folded back in the travel position and that dampens the, the clinging and the clanging. So that's how you get around that easy fix. Um, and that's pretty much that. The main con, the main detriment that I thought came with monster ramps or with mega ramps or whatever with these fold out dovetail ramps uh, was that if you're hauling a car or a vehicle in second position, or a tractor, or you roll something up this trailer, pretend you have two partials on here, something on the front of the trailer closer to the gooseneck, and then your second load rolls up the ramps and needs every bit of that, the, the rest of the trailer. Let's say your first partial is 20 feet, your second partial is 
10 feet and you have a 30 foot trailer or 25 plus five. So the second, uh, that second number, that five feet portion of deck is your monster ramps. You unfold them, you roll something up. Now, what do you do to, to, to put your ramps back in place? You can't because the item or the vehicle that you rolled into second position on your trailer went up the ramps, but now you can't fold the ramps back down because that, that load, that item is in the place where your ramps would be. That to me is the biggest downside of monster ramps. Now, does that happen often? Uh, you know, if I had a crystal ball, I'd be really, really rich, but I don't. So, um, um, but if, and when you do move a vehicle or a load, uh, that, that needs to go up the ramps, you got to think, how do I get my ramps back down? So the only thing I found is either a, you got to be really careful or your dispatcher has to be really careful not to have your second load be something that, you know, needs to roll up because then you need, you don't have space to put your ramps away or two, if they do, it has to be, you know, just not exactly taking up every inch of your trailer. Again, if you have a 20 foot partial in the front, 10 in the rear, um, the second uh, load should be less than 10 because you can then secure your ramps in the upright position for travel. Um, and you still have some space to, to do that because of course there's hinges, as you can see in this picture here, uh, to hold those ramps in place. Uh, the other thing is you can always haul an additional pair of ramps, I would say aluminum ramps, um, to be able to you know, load a vehicle in second position, not have to use your monster ramps, use your aluminum ramps, which they cost about six, 700 bucks or so, um, carry them in the bed of your truck or, or somehow some way secure them to the underneath of your trailer or something. Uh, and that way you could get past that. But that's the real only detriment that I was able to see um, as far as that goes. Now, hydraulic dovetails, the same thing as these monster ramps or mega ramps, except for that it moves with hydraulics. So at the touch of a button, you can raise and lower your dovetail or your ramps. Super, super convenient. One of the guys that I dispatch for has these. Now, that brings me to the next part of this video or this, uh, uh, this training guide here is that weight is everything. If you have a CDL, weight doesn't matter, but the weight of your trailer means everything. You want to be as, as low on weight as possible. And I'm not going to get into GBWR because I cover that in detail in my free course. Um, but I do want to talk about the weight of your trailer. So the lighter the trailer, the more weight you can haul bottom line. And there's more that goes into weight such as, you know, uh, what is your, what is the weight capacity of your truck? And what is the weight capacity of your trailer? I'm not going to get into the truck stuff here, but as far as your trailer goes, um, you definitely want to try to keep your axles to 7,000 or 8,000 pound axles, because typically if you're rolling non CDL, this is what I'm talking about, not CDL. If you're rolling non-CDL, um, those axles are typically gonna be typically gonna be on a trailer that's that's the right weight. For example, my 32 foot PJ um, has 8,000 pound axles, which means I can carry 16,000 pounds on it. But when you know 26,000 pounds is the magic number, so when I take away the 9,000 pounds of my truck and the 6,500 pounds of my of my trailer, you know, obviously 16,000 pounds is not does not fit into the equation there. About 10,000 is the most I can haul, which is fine. That's more than adequate for the loads you're going to find out there. But please don't buy so much trailer that it's too heavy. That's huge. That's really, really big. You get a 40 foot trailer, chances are it's going to weigh about 8,000 pounds. And if you have an 8,000 pound trailer, for example, instead of my 6,500 pound trailer, that's now 1,500 pounds less of loads that I can carry. So if I was able to carry 10,000 pounds with my 6,500 pound trailer, I can now only carry 8,500 pound max load with my 8,000 pound trailer. So now I have a 40 foot long trailer, but I can only carry 8,500 pounds. I can carry less weight than I can on my 32 foot trailer. Now having more length is always better to have um, because there's lighter loads available. But in my mind, I didn't want to, you know, clip my feet by getting a super heavy trailer and limit the amount of loads I could haul. I wanted to haul as much as I could safely, of course, and stay underneath my 26,000 pound threshold. I hope I didn't confuse you a whole lot there, but the point is keep your trailer as light as possible. Now, the reason I started this portion of this video and, uh, and connected it with the last part, which was, you know, uh, uh, dovetails and hydraulic dovetails, my buddy, uh, who I've been dispatching with for, I think three months now, if not more, we've been, we've been at it for a while. We're doing great. He's never made less than $3,000 a week. Uh, usually we're in 3,500 range. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, the week before last week he did, let me see the week before last he made uh 3,900. And this week that we just closed was his biggest week yet. 
Uh, he was out on the road five days, home two nights, and oh, three nights actually, and we did forty three hundred dollars. So you can do it without a CDL. Not I'm not a proponent for a CDL. I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying non CDL does not mean you won't make money. So that's that. Um, but he has a hydraulic dovetail. So he and I are making great money, and his max load can only be eight thousand pounds. Because not only does he have, and I'm I'm not looking down on the guy. I'm just letting you know he bought this trailer before we hooked up, before he encountered a video like this, which is why I'm making this video, um, so you avoid some of the pitfalls and 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 not you know limit yourself. Um, he bought his trailer before we got together, and it makes sense what he did. He bought his trailer wanting to have a heavy duty trailer so he would not have issues on the road. Common, I mean that makes that makes perfect sense. Um, he has ten thousand pound axles. And he has a hydraulic dovetail. His trailer is heavy, about 2,000 pounds heavier than my 32-foot trailer. He also has a 32. So all the hydraulics, everything that goes with the hydraulic dovetail, all the weldings for all that, the axles are more weight. He has dualies. All that weight is less weight than we, that we can load on the trailer. So when I'm dispatching for him, it's a little bit more difficult because I have to find loads for him that... All together, whether it's one load or, or, or a few partials, have to max out at no more than 8,000 pounds. Listen, if you're going to self-dispatch, do yourself a favor and don't put yourself in that predicament because now you're doing what I do sometimes. I find great loads for him, but I have to let them go because they're going to exceed his weight limit of 8,000 pound max. If you're going to have a dispatcher, don't do that to them because they then have to work harder to find loads that are within your 8,000 8, pound uh, weight limit. So... Do yourself a favor, get the lightest trailer possible and the longest trailer possible. My opinion is that 32 feet seems to be that sweet spot where my trailer is only 6,500 pounds. I can still carry 10,000 pound loads and I've made great money doing it. And my other guys that have similar trailers, they have 30s or 32s um, with, with uh, you know, manually folding down dovetails or monster ramps or mega ramps. They're doing well as well. So that's something I really want to stress here. Don't buy too long of a trailer and don't trick it out and get 10,000 pound axles or hydraulic dovetails because you're killing yourself as far as how much, how many loads or how much weight you can haul at once. This part of the episode belongs to all of you. So as far as the brands go, I have a PJ. Again, I'm not endorsed by PJ. I don't, I'm not endorsed by anybody really. Um, but Diamond C, in my opinion, seems to be the creme de la creme brand of trailer. The welds are super, super good. Uh, it also costs more. So if you look, if you're able to spend a bit more and you want the highest quality, from what I was able to tell online and forums and reviews and all that kind of stuff, Diamond C is, is, is top notch. PJ to me is the commercial version of the PJ slash big, big text brand. They're both owned by the same company. Um, and what research I did, that's kind of what I got out of it. Again, that's my interpretation of, of uh, all the information I read online before I bought. Uh, but there's a lot of other trailers. There's Appalachian. There's a lot of different things. So let me know what kind of trailers do you all have already and how do you like them? Which ones suck? Which ones are great? That's the kind of information that it's hard to find online. And if you guys can do us the favor and comment below and let me and everybody else know that watches this channel know what brand of trailer you have, what you like, what you don't like, that'll help us out all, all that'll help us all out tremendously. All trailer tires are not created equal. Basically, you either have a standard 16 inch tire or you upgrade to super singles, which are 17 and a half inch tires. 16 inch tires, all tires come in different plies and I'm not a tire guru. So if I'm wrong about some things here, that's fine. But just want to give you a heads up. If you're going to get a trailer with trailer tires, 16 inch tires, make sure you have a high ply. The higher the ply number, the better, because that means they're thicker. They're more heavy duty. However, to me, the top notch tire, which is what I upgraded to on my trailer are 17 and a half inch, what's called super singles. They're damn near car tires. They're amazing. I've been in Jersey, New York, climbing curbs, rubbing against all kinds of stuff. Never had an issue. The only flat I've gotten is when I went through a construction site and rolled over a nail. I think any tire would succumb to that. But other than that, if you can upgrade to super singles, they charge about 700 bucks or so to do that when you buy your, your trailer. Um, but, you know, it's I would I swear by my super singles. If you can afford to do it, do it. 
Axles are lubed by either grease or oil. My trailer came with oil bath axles. I had them changed to grease bearings because I didn't want the seals to crack or as I'm turning in tight turns or whatever and leak oil onto my trailer brakes and then I lose trailer brakes. So I know that's a stretch. A lot of guys say that doesn't happen at all really, but I didn't want to take the chance. So I switched over to grease bearings. Basically, I pay 300 bucks every 30, 40,000 miles to have them repacked and that's how I get down. As far as trailer axle uh, weights go, you're never going to exceed the amount of weight that your trailer axles can carry. For example, 20,000 pounds of weight, that's what two 10,000 pound axles can carry. You're not even going to exceed what 7,000 pound axles can carry. Electric brakes are standard on trailers. I've heard from a lot of car haulers that their electric brakes give out at times and the truck is then doing all the stopping. That freaked me out, which is why I upgraded to electric over hydraulic brakes. They're the superior type of braking system, really reliable, but also pricey to upgrade to. Um, let me know if you've had issues with your electric trailer brakes giving out on you. Adding eight sliding ratchets has been one of the best upgrades I've ever done to my trailer. I had them installed on the passenger side of my trailer in case I have to check my straps on the side of the road or on the side of the highway, I won't be in the line of traffic. And they saved me tons of time because instead of having to pull my ratchets out of my toolbox, sling them over the, over the load, secure them and then unsecure them, wrap them back up, put them back in my toolbox, I just reel up my straps like the big rigs do, secure it and I'm off to the next load. Thanks for checking out my trailer buyer's guide. I hope this helps and maybe points out some things that can make your life easier on the road. As far as learning the business, for all you new folks out there, check out my free Before You Buy a Truck course. If you're at the stage where you're researching and preparing to get your business started, check out the Ready, Set, Prepare course to guide you along. And if you want to use who I use for all these services, send me a comment, check the comment section, or just send me an email. Until the next episode, keep it moving, everybody.